The Halo franchise is very special to a lot of people, and sales certainly reflect that. Since 2001, the 11 major releases in the franchise collectively sold in excess of 67 million units across three Xboxes, meaning that the average Halo game has sold well over 6 million units. A massively impressive number from a series that has been a major contribution to video games. In this criminally short video, I'm going to explore sales statistics in the Halo franchise, including raw numbers, biggest sellers, attach rates, and contextual information. I want to answer the question, is the Halo franchise on an upward or downward trend? And at the end of this video, as a bonus, I'll use my findings to estimate what the sales might be for the upcoming Halo Infinite game on the Xbox One. We have to start somewhere, so let's start by breaking down those 67 million in sales and looking at how Halo did on each of the three Xbox consoles. On the original Xbox, Halo sales totaled nearly 15 million units, an impressive number for just two game releases, and a crucial number for a completely new brand of system. On the 360, sales were incredible, over 43 million spread across the six Halo games on that system, further helping to establish the Xbox brand. On the Xbox One, sales so far have been a little less, at around 8 million. But if we drill down, we see that among the three Halo releases on the system, one of them was a repackage, and another was a Halo Wars game. With Halo Infinite coming next, this number will surely grow. Let's continue to drill down on the various Halo games and identify the biggest selling Halo game in franchise history. Do you know which one it is? It's Halo 3 on the Xbox 360, a game that sold an incredible 12.1 million copies globally. And some sources even suggest that the game may have sold upward of 14 million units. The next best-selling games were Halo Reach and Halo 4 on the same system, games that sold around 10 million copies each. If we take all of these Halo games and plot them on a scatterplot against time, it allows us to see the general sales trend for the Halo franchise over the last 20 years. Here is the aforementioned Halo 3, way up here released in 2007. Two of the lower selling games are here and here, Halo Wars 1 and 2. Now on the surface, this chart might make it appear that franchise sales at first went upward, peaked, and have since been on a downward trend. But that's just not the full picture. I believe to get the full story, we also need to explore attach rates. An attach rate expresses the percent of system owners that own a given game. So it gives us a better and more nuanced insight into the sales penetration that Halo games managed on each system. And in the case of Halo 3 on the Xbox 360, the franchise's best-selling game, the attach rate was about 14.1%, meaning that 14% of Xbox 360 owners purchased Halo 3. That's pretty damn impressive, but it's not the most impressive. Can you guess the Halo game that had the biggest attach rate? It's Halo 2 on the original Xbox. A game that sold over 8 million units. A game with a massive attach rate of 34%, meaning that more than a third of original Xbox owners had Halo 2 in their library. This kind of attach rate is moving into Super Mario type territory. In fact, the legendary Super Mario 64 had an attach rate of 35% on the 64. So Halo 2 is right there among the very biggest games in the industry's history. But let's get back to my original point, that the raw sales trajectory doesn't tell the entire story. Recall the sales scatterplot, which showed an upward and then a downward trend in Halo sales. Now let's plot each game's attach rate on a scatterplot against time. And what we see is a much flatter and more consistent chart. Now yes, the two attach rates for Halo 1 and 2 are massive, and everything else is a drop-off from those. But this was a brand new console, and Halo had everybody's attention back then. 
In the Xbox systems that followed, other franchises and other options had better established themselves, and Halo didn't have the spotlight to itself any longer. Among the Halo games that followed, attach rates have held relatively stable in comparison to what we saw with the raw sales numbers. This, at least to me, demonstrates a loyal fan base to the Halo franchise. A fan base that has been consistently supportive. Let's take a quick look at the when of all these Halo releases. The landscape, the contextual information surrounding the game's release dates. Games aren't released in a vacuum, things are happening around them. So now let's jump out of the vacuum and into that landscape. This is the timeline of major systems and their lifespans from the PlayStation 2 to today's consoles. As I said earlier, Halo 1 and 2 in 2000 and 2004 obviously helped to launch the Xbox brand, and I would put Halo 1 among nearly any other video game as being one of the most important in history in terms of launching a brand. On the 360, Halo 3 came out in 2007, and after that, a slew of Halo games came out roughly around 2010. Now this is just my opinion, but I feel that this onslaught of Halo games likely helped Microsoft during a critical time to wage an effective battle against the PlayStation 3, and in fact, had Sony on the back foot for quite some time. Then the Halo franchise takes a bit of a break until 2014 and beyond on the Xbox One. Looking back at the 360, this period around 2010 can probably be considered the glory years of Microsoft and Halo. And that leads me back to my original question. Is Halo as a franchise on the upswing or are things going downhill? Now the great or terrible thing about statistics is that they can be used to fit whatever narrative you need them to fit, and this is especially true with Halo. It would be so easy to look at the raw sales numbers by system and then by individual game and say that Halo is clearly going downhill. But looking at the attach rates for individual games, that's not the case at all. After the Xbox, things have held relatively steady. Overall, I would have to say that Halo is a pretty stable franchise that isn't necessarily going up or down, but the next great game can always change things. And talking about the next Halo game, for the purposes of estimating the sales of Halo Infinite, I'm going to take the average of the attach rates for Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, Halo 4, and Halo 5. Those are the mainline games that I believe most applicable to this estimate. And the average attach rate among those five games is 11.5%. And although precise numbers for Xbox One hardware sales are a little hard to come by, I'm going to use 38 million as a rough estimate for the number of Xbox One consoles sold worldwide so far. So multiplying the average attach rate by the number of consoles sold gives us what I would consider to be a fair estimate of just over 4 million units sold for Halo Infinite. Of course, sales could be much higher if Microsoft pours a ton of money into promotion and advertising. This is the end of my Halo exploration for now, but in the future I'll be compiling a complete statistical analysis of the original Xbox, complete with a regression model to look at what was driving individual game sales. So if you enjoy this sort of thing, I'd massively appreciate a subscription. In the meantime, thanks for watching, all the best, and the sky's the limit.